The naturally aspirated V8 Morgan is no more. That means the likes of the Plus 8, the Aeromax, Aero Coupe, Aero Super Sport, Aero 8 are no longer for this world. But the last free-breathing Morgan Aero V8 isn't just a sticker's job and a price tag. Oh no, it's something truly special. This is the Aero GT, the most hardcore Aero ever built. The brainchild of designer John Wells, the Aero GT is a sort of twee, hand-built version of Porsche's 911 GT3. Its look is inspired by Morgan's old GT3 race cars and was apparently how the Aero 8 was always supposed to look. But it's more than just a look here. The GT's Aero bits offer actual downforce and reduced lift. It's more aerodynamic than a regular Aero 8 as well, which is pretty cool. You can spec a carbon fibre hardtop which aids Aero even further. Basically, Morgan ain't mucking about. Under the hood is that tried and tested BMW sourced 4.8 litre V8 with 370-ish horsepower and 370-ish pound-foot. 0-62 takes four and a half seconds and it'll top out at 170 miles an hour and it'll do all of that while bathing you in glorious, glorious V8 noise like this. The exhaust pipes are on the side, so you can hear it really well in the cabin, and it's got no roof. Obs. Now, here's something really cool. All of the Aero GTs will be manual cars. This one is a very early pre-prod and is an automatic, because reasons. But still, the fact that the production cars are manual is something to be celebrated. It's a hardcore car for hardcore car people. It's based on the outgoing Aero 8 chassis, which means it's light, 1182 kilos in fact. It also comes with adjustable suspension so you can set it up to your preference. Want it slightly softer for the road? Feel free. Want to get it track ready? Well, sir or madam, you may. And you may go nuts while you're there. What's the point in having a featherweight track focus thing if you don't have a play every now and then? There's a kicker to the Aero GT, and it's quite a big one. There will only ever be eight of them, and everyone who's put down their cash for it, everyone who's bought one, they have meetings with Morgan, they get design advice, they get talked through what they want from their car, which means there's some pretty wild specs out there. The launch car was grey with this lovely yellow stripe on it. No one's gone for that. They've gone a bit nuts. The first car is in Miami blue, and that looks pretty awesome. And there's one we saw in build while we were shooting this, there's a green and gold combo. It's an homage to a Morgan race car. Cool thing is, they've not just stopped at the paint job. No, it's going to have a big wing and, and gold wheels. It's pretty special. I like it. This distinctive number is very, very orange. And there's some beautiful detailing, orange of course, on the inside. As with every Morgan, the panels are hand beaten. The materials assembled and formed by hand. Okay, it's not as fast as a GT3 and you won't get as quick around a circuit, but you can go to the factory and shake hands with the bloke who formed the wings and the chap who painted it. The most hardcore Morgan doesn't necessarily mean, oh, it's the most hardcore car in the world. It just means it takes itself a little bit more seriously than it used to. This particular GT has been set up to ride pretty hard, but because of the adaptable dampers, if you want to, you can twist it and undo it and fiddle with it. However, I've left it as is just to see what pre-prod Morgan is like. Now, the weight of this thing, it weighs less than a McLaren Senna, which means you'd expect it to feel spry and light and lively. The reality of it is it actually feels quite heavy. The steering especially is really heavy to punt around. It's not pin sharp. You don't go over a bump and think, oh yes, there were three tiny bumps to that and then two larger ones shortly afterwards. You don't get any of that nonsense. It feels brutish. It feels old school. It sounds old school. Hell, it looks old school and brutish. So really it's ideal. It suits the character of the car. This is really big old British muscle. It wants to make noise and it wants to make you work for your supper. Yes, it will do 0-62 to in four and a half seconds, but it's not the kind of car you'd ever want to do that in. You don't want to push it, you just want the noise, which is good because it has that by the bucket load. This exhaust is insane. Second gear, 30 miles an hour, national speed limit road for anyone starts, 
and then go. Oh, she picks up. <laughs> As there's so little car to push around, the brakes, they're pretty good. When you stamp on them, it's not that kind of pedal where you modulate it and it's delicate and you can do it with your toes and all that. It's old school, brutish, it's heavy, it requires effort and work. It's a car made using traditional techniques in a traditional factory. So it will feel a little bit oldie worldy but that's the glory of Morgan. The way you feel the metal every time you flick something, you press the button, the car wobbles, it vibrates as it starts up. And then you press on, you get the soundtrack. And when you press on a little harder, you get the feeling, you get the full 4D mega cinema experience. There's no adaptable this and pressable that without a spanner and a little bit of trial and error. But most importantly, it's a driving experience you don't need to be going at 10 tenths to properly exploit. That's rare, and that's good. No matter whether the Aero GT is good or bad, there's one thing that's for sure. It's an ending. A full stop on 50 years of burbly V8 Morgan goodness. As much as I and Morgan, I imagine, would love to keep making stuff like this, it's just not possible anymore. BMW, for one, doesn't use this motor anymore in anything, and it was built specifically for Morgan on the prototype line. Morgan has to modernise. It can't build cars like this anymore, even from a legislation point of view. But we do know a little bit about what Morgan's planning in the future. The EV3 is on its way. Yes, it's been delayed slightly because, well, they changed powertrain people and they want to get it really, really, really right. And that's a change for the better. Who knows what will replace the Aero GT to take on the role of Morgan's flagship? Will it be hybrid, all electric or whatever? I have a sneaking suspicion that it'll still be steeped in the tradition we're used to from Morgan, but with an interesting twist. As endings go, the Aero GT is actually a pretty sad one, if I'm honest with you, because there won't be something quite like it ever again, really. Yeah, people may build something like it as a special one-off or something like that, but Morgan won't be building cars like this with a big, naturally aspirated V8 anymore. In 2000, the Aero 8 was the beginning of a new modern book for Morgan. And this, the Aero GT, it's a final chapter and it's a pretty thrilling one. It's fantastic fun. It put a smile on my face. It's a, it's a satisfying way to go out. But really, it's not a book I was ready to finish. And I think a lot of people will feel the same way.